Hello everyone, I'm Ernie and I am so glad you're here with us today. Today we are going to work on a project that was inspired to me by professional prospector Chris Ralph. Many of you know who Chris Ralph is and maybe you don't know who Chris Ralph is and what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave a link to his channel in my description box which will lead you to his channel so you can check out his content. He's an excellent teacher. He will teach you what you need to know about prospecting, about geology and I encourage you to check out his channel and to get involved in his teachings because it'll definitely bless you in a great way and right now let's get into this project. In today's project we're going to see if there is any silver in our high litharge with flour. These are the ingredients that we're going to use in today's project. Several episodes ago, I did an episode on some ore that my next door neighbor Steve had brought to me, and I did get a little bit of gold out of that uh, that piece of ore. But apparently, what was coming across some of um, my subscribers' TV screen showed that that bead of gold was silver, but actually, it was really a lot of gold. It may had a, a, a little bit of a shiny silver tint. To to it, but Chris Ralph being a detailed person as he is, he made a suggestion to me because he understood that I was using high litharge with flour. And litharge does at times have gold and silver mixed in with the lead oxide. And if I remember correctly, when I purchased this high litharge with flour, it did say it had a little bit of silver into it. And so what Chris Ralph suggested that that I do a dry run with making a, a smelt and using just the high litharge. And if there's any silver inside that litharge, it will come out in the smelt. And so that's what we're going to do. And let's get into it. First, we're going to add in 100 grams of anhydrous borax. Second, we're going to add in 50 grams of soda ash. Next, because we have no concentrate, we're going to add in 100 grams of silica sand. Next, we will add in 30 grams of potassium nitrate. And lastly, I will add in 100 grams of high litharge with flour. I normally use about 30 to 50 grams of high litharge with flour whenever I'm doing a smelt. But by adding in 100 grams of litharge, I should be able to get some type of measurable amount if there is any silver inside the litharge. Here is our flux that is ready to be poured into a heated crucible. We are going to use a brand new clay crucible that I had picked up from Legends Mining Supply. And we also have a stick of rebar as a collector metal. Here are two cupels that I had picked up from Legends Mining Supply in Sparks, Nevada. The one on the left is a 56 gram cupel and the one on the right is a 15 gram cupel. We are now heating up our furnace. We have now added in our crucible and our stick of rebar as a collector metal. Our furnace and our crucible is up to 1500 degrees. Now it's time to add in our flux with high litharge with flour.
Our crucible in our flux is now up to temperature of 2,000 degrees, and we will let it cook for the next 25 minutes. If you watch the pour as we slow the video down, you can see the lead coming out of the pour. We will allow the cone to cool off for an hour. As we are waiting for our cone mold and our cone to cool down, I want to take this opportunity to share with you that Chris Ralph has a book and it's called Fists Full of Gold. It's a very good book. I just got mine not too long ago and I just started uh, reading it. But the chapters that I'm beginning to read is this, this is what I need the most is basic geology for prospectors. And I want to encourage you, if you want to know more about prospecting, a little more about geology, and all the fine details, I encourage you to get Chris Ralph's book and you can get it on Amazon for $30 and it's well worth the $30 and I encourage you to do that. So I encourage you to pick up Chris Ralph's book, Fists Full of Gold. It's well worth the money. And here is our cone. Our lead prill is actually pretty large. Let's get this weight up. Our lead prill weighs 37 grams from 100 grams of high litharge with flour. We will use this cupel that is rated for 56 grams in the scupulation process. Our furnace and our cupel is heated up to 1500 degrees and let's get our lead prill into the cupel. Here is the apparatus that I built, and it's nothing more than a shop vac and taking the exhaust from the exhaust port, blowing that air through the hose and into the furnace where more oxygen reaches the lead prill and it oxidizes, and the cupel absorbs the oxidation of the lead prill. I do want to say that you can purchase litharge that is gold and silver free. You can see our tiny silver bead that we got from 100 grams of high litharge with flour. Here is our silver bead measured up to a penny. I do want to make a mention that you can use lead instead of litharge as a metal collector to extract the precious metals from your smelt. Well, this wraps up this episode of getting our silver out of our high litharge with flour. And as you can see, using 100 grams of high litharge with flour, we barely got any type of silver in there, but there was silver in there. And I want to say a, a great big thank you to Chris Ralph for bringing this to my attention because I had completely forgot about that. And so we can see that there was a little bit. And for me, it doesn't make any difference if that, it was that much because I normally use between 30 to 50 grams 
grams in any of my smelts and so we used 100 grams today so i hope you enjoyed this episode and if you like this episode i encourage you to spank that like button share this on your channel so others can enjoy the experience of this project and if you haven't subscribed to our channel i would like to encourage you to become a subscriber become part of our au family we would love to have you in the family and to communicate with you we're so thankful that you're here we deeply appreciate your support and we will see you on the next one